Our next speaker is uh, Jared Yo Younger. Uh, Jared's assistant professor and director of the Adult and Pediatric Pain Lab at Stanford. Uh, he received his uh, PhD at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Uh, he, did a, he was a postdoc at Arizona State. Uh, and now he's a, uh, then was a postdoc at Stanford and now is on the faculty at Stanford. He has numerous peer-reviewed journal articles, reviews, and book chapters. He was recipient of the 2011 Research Award from the American Academy of Pain Medicine. And he's going to talk this time on brain changes in the first month of daily opioid therapy. Okay, so I'm actually going to show you what happens to your brain when you've been taking opioids for a month. So this is a pretty interesting stuff. It's never been done before. So I'm gonna, I did most of my literary references in the first talk, so there's not gonna be uh, very many in this one. This is the only one. Uh, I just wanna start off by saying that, as you know, opioids are really tricky. They're, I've seen people lives drastically improved because of opioids. I've seen people's lives destroyed by opioids. I've seen people's opioids who weren't even taking opioids. So they're very powerful, good and bad. And so you get a lot of polar views. We see people uh, who are doing inpatient detoxification. So we see the worst of the worst, people who have been taking a gram or two grams of morphine equivalent every day for years, and it's very debilitating. So we see all sides of this. And so there's a lot of polar views. I'm not pro-opioid, I'm not anti-opioid. The question I'm asking is, what if we could take the opioid medication, what if we could keep all the good parts of it and throw away all the bad? Wouldn't we have something really good on our hands? And so that's what this research is about. It's about figuring out what's good, what's bad, how can we capitalize on that and increase the efficacy of those drugs and help people. Now, I want to say just from the onset that we're not talking about acute therapy very much. This has more implications for chronic use, for, for chronic pain. So this isn't a, a week of opioid use or, or two. Now, the reason this is an issue, some of this is probably going to be very familiar with you, is there's a lot of opioids out there. In fact, it's the second most prescribed class of medications. The number one prescribed dispense medication in the United States is hydrocodone, more than any other drug. And last year, 2011, I think there were about 250 million dispensed prescriptions for opioids at about a month duration. So there's a lot of this drug out there. So if it's causing problems, if it's affecting the brain, if there are problems with addiction and, and other issues, then we need to, to know what those are. We know that it's the first substance of new abuse now. It is surpassing marijuana and other drugs. This is not an expose on the dangers of opioids. I just want to highlight some of these. And you've probably heard that the deaths due to opioid overdose have been increasing drastically. And this is data up till 2007, um, but the trend is still continuing where we're getting over 15,000 deaths from opioid overdose each year. And that's just too much. Now some of this, if you've seen the 2012 paper on uh, opioid rotation is due to um, poor planning when you're doing the opioid rotation and the opioid switching. Using the old equal analgesic charts are causing some problems between particular combinations. So if you do opioid rotation, uh, I f I'm sorry, I forget the author's name, but there's a 2012 paper and quite a bit of discussion about new recommendations for doing opioid rotation and doing the switches. So please check that out. So when I'm tracking this in the research field and also clinically, the public and government sentiment regarding opioids seems to be on a bit of a pendulum, right? So sometimes it's all about we're undertreating patients, we need to get them, we need to get adequate treatment, we need to do everything we can to help them out. It's a horrible travesty, it's a tragedy when people are in pain. And then it swings to the other side and it's about abuse and it's about overdose and it's like we're over medicating these individuals, there's too many opioids, let's pull it back. And that's very harmful, it makes it tricky to do the research, it's even more tricky I'm sure on the clinical side. So the purpose of this research is to stop these pendulum swings from occurring, whether it's over treatment and then under treatment, and we want to stabilize this, again by figuring out what's the good, what's the bad, how do we optimize it. So. I mentioned some of the more obvious downsides of opioids, uh, addiction being one and overdose death being the other one. Here's some of the others that